Like any electronic device, the Nexus 7 will occasionally receive software updates to its operating system. If you're connected to the internet frequently, then these updates should appear automatically. As shown here, when I unlock my tablet, an update is ready and waiting. You will also receive a notification prompt in the top left hand corner of your screen and a notification itself if you swipe down from the top of the screen. You can always manually check for updates too by going to settings, choosing about tablet at the bottom of the screen and then system updates at the top of the screen. This will show you when the tablet last checked for an update and the button towards the bottom of the screen lets you check for any new updates. When an update is available, simply press the install now option and wait. Software updates usually take 5 to 10 minutes to complete and your tablet may turn itself off and on again a couple of times, so don't be alarmed. Software updates should never interfere with your current data or settings. They are designed to improve performance, fix bugs and introduce new enhancements. Now for a couple of final points, if you have modified or rooted your tablet, Updates may not be automatically available, so check out any one of the many excellent Android forums around what to do on this. Also, software updates aren't always made available globally at the same time, so just be patient if you see and hear about other users getting a software update before you. The Nexus 7 stock operating system comes with a dock that works very much like your mobile phone. It enables you to put six icons within a dock at the bottom of your screen that remains fixed even when you switch home screens. This is the ideal place to put your favourite apps so that they are accessible all the time. Moving icons in and out of the dock relies on the tried and tested method of long pressing. So, long press on an icon to either drag it in or out of the dock. Remember, the limit is six but you can have less if you want. If you have seen my previous videos, you will know that you can put multiple apps in a folder. You can then drag these folders into your dock. The one drawback is that if you put a folder in the dock, you can't see its name. Also note that you cannot put widgets in your dock either. The icon in the middle of the dock is your app drawer, which acts as a shortcut to your entire application library. This is a fixed icon that cannot be moved from the dock, so don't bother trying to do a long press on it because it will always end up sending you to your app drawer. Widgets are wonderful magical things that breathe life into your tablet, but they can quickly fill up your screen. But the great news is many widgets are resizable and will automatically adjust their size to fit a screen. As you can see this news widget is far too big for the screen I'm dragging it onto, but look how it resizes itself once I drop it on the screen. Simple. I can do the same thing with this battery widget which takes up four spaces but smartly resizes itself to just one space. Now, although the screen is full, I can still shuffle things around a bit if I want to. If I long press on any icon or widget, I can pick it up and drag it around the screen. As you can see, it's pushing other widgets and icons around so it can find space and when I let go, it will settle in its spot. Life used to be simple for the Nexus 7 notification tray. All you had to do was swipe anywhere from the top of the screen and the notification tray with options would be displayed. Now it's not so simple. Since the Jellybean 4.2 update, look what's happened. The screen lock and setting buttons have disappeared. Surely they haven't taken away functionality. Fortunately, they haven't. They've just put it somewhere else. So, if you swipe down on the right hand section of the top of the screen, a whole bunch of settings are displayed. These include Wi-Fi, brightness, screen rotation, profiles and many more. So, to summarise, swipe down from the left side of the screen to bring up notifications and swipe down from the right hand side of the screen to bring down settings. It's easy when you know how, but I bet some of you didn't. There are three button options at the bottom of your Nexus 7. You probably use two of them all the time, but the third maybe not so much. Here is what it does. It's a task manager list and it shows you all the applications you've recently been using. It's a great way to jump from one application to another, no matter what application you're currently in. It's a chronological list, so if you jump to an application, that app becomes the first in the list. If you wish, you can remove items from the list you no longer want to see by swiping them away. Now this might be all common knowledge to you, but here is a little secret you might not be aware of. 
Long press on an application and two options will appear. The first option simply removes it from the list, just like swiping it away. But the second option displays application information. From this screen you can do numerous things, such as a force stop, clear defaults and even uninstall it. It's a useful extra shortcut to complement the task manager list. Here is a quick tip about how you can manage pictures within the gallery app that comes with the Nexus 7. As you can see, I can scroll through each individual picture in a full screen mode and they look very nice and pretty. However, if I pinch out, I can now see pictures to the left and right, so it looks more like a slideshow. Now at this point, if I want to delete any of these pictures, I can simply swipe up or down to throw them off the screen and delete the picture. If I now back out of this slideshow, you can see that the picture I flicked away has gone. Finally, if you want to get the slideshow view from this screen, use the option in the top left hand corner and select film strip. And again, side scroll to view, swipe up and down to remove. A simple but handy tip. The internet remembers a lot of things about you, especially Google. And if you go into the gallery on your Nexus 7, you may be in for a little bit of a surprise. All these pictures are images I've either taken with the Nexus 7 or transferred over. These ones, however, are from yesteryear. Old profile pictures, images from a blog, stuff I haven't seen in ages. How on earth did they end up on here? Well, the telltale sign is this tiny symbol next to the album name. These are all Picasso albums on the internet and they sync with your Android device. There are two steps to removing these images from the gallery and the first thing you need to do is to turn off the option that syncs them to the Nexus 7. To do this, go to settings, then accounts and then choose your Google account. On here, at the bottom of the screen, there is an option that says instant upload. Untick that box. Next, go to settings and then choose apps. Swipe over to the all column and then find the gallery application. Once you're on the application screen itself, there will be a button marked clear data. Press it. Please note that while this shouldn't delete photos stored on the Nexus 7, it may delete temporary images, images transferred over via Bluetooth and so on. So do be careful. Now, if I return to the gallery, you can see that I have all the images I should have and all the Picasso images have disappeared. And just to prove a point, if I go back to settings and turn on instant upload and then return to the gallery again, you can see that the pictures from Picasso return. And as if by magic, there they are. The new Daydream feature for Android turns your tablet into a permanent display screen when your tablet is docked or charging. It displays different things depending on the app it comes from and this feature is being added to more and more applications every day. To turn this feature on you will need to go to the settings screen and then choose display and then there will be an option to choose daydream. On this screen you can flick the switch to turn the feature on and there is also an option to choose whether you wish daydream to activate when the tablet is docked, charging or both. Each daydream has its own personal settings tab where you can adjust how the daydream behaves. For example, the clock settings allow you to change the display from digital to analog. There is also an option at the top of the screen to test how the daydream will work. Now, some daydreams are interactive, such as this photo gallery that allows me to move pictures around the screen. The Google Currents daydream shows snippets of news articles which, when you press on them, go into further detail. Some daydreams even launch the main application. It's just a case of experimenting and seeing what you can discover. Finally, there is a little easter egg you can uncover with daydreams and if you want me to spoil it, carry on watching. Go to the settings screen and scroll to the bottom and choose about tablet. On the Android version number, tap it a few times and this will show a large jelly bean. Long press on it and it will explode into loads of tiny jelly beans. Flick 10 or so of them off the screen and that will unlock the jelly bean mode in Daydream. Now, maybe I should plug in a controller and press L1 start left X and select. I wonder what that would unlock. Up until the Jelly Bean 4.2 update of the Nexus 7, you had developer options. However, if you go to the settings and scroll to the bottom of the screen, I bet you haven't currently got this option that I'm pointing to right now. This feature has now been hidden from view, but here is how to unlock it. 
In settings, go to the bottom of the screen and press About Tablet. At the bottom of this screen is something called Build Number. All you need to do is tap on this seven times and this will unlock developer options again in the main settings screen. Now obviously developer options are used mostly by people designing apps but there are some features you can take advantage of such as visual input and speed up transitions. I have featured these in previous videos so check them out if you want to know more details. A word of warning though, you mess about with developer options at your own risk. Software upgrades are usually a very good thing but occasionally they can be a bad thing. Take Google Currents for example. I love using this news aggregating application but recently they went and updated it and now all the menus are on the left and the navigation's changed and it runs slowly and basically, in my opinion, it's not as good as what we had before. So can I return to what I had before, to downgrade the application so to speak? Well the answer for pre-installed system applications is yes. Go to the application tray, that's the middle button in your dock at the bottom of the screen, find the application you want, long press on it to pick it up and then drag it to the top of the screen where it says app info. On this screen for system applications there is an option that says uninstall updates. Press on it and it will ask you if you want to uninstall all the updates for this application. You may also be asked if you want to replace the application with the factory original. Press yes and that will rewind you to what you had before. Once you have completed this action, you should notice that the version number of the application has rolled back to an earlier version number. Now, doing this shouldn't remove any personal settings or data, and as you can see, Google Currents is back to the way I like it with this nice front-end page. Just a final point of note, unfortunately this cannot be done with applications downloaded from the marketplace. You would need to uninstall the application completely, and then find a specific APK file for the version you would like to use. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please click that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And if you're hungry for more videos, subscribe. It's free after all.